<laughs> I can't stop talking about OJ. It's got yes. everybody thinking. All right, well, welcome back. Our next guest be began her career as a corporate attorney before sidelining the law for a bigger passion, sports. As an ESPN sports business reporter, she shared the spotlight with her male counterparts before transitioning herself yet again into an author, guest speaker, and founder of her own boutique publicity firm. Now she helps others find and build their brands. Joining us now to fill in some of the blanks, we welcome publicist and sports business analyst Christy Doche to the show. Welcome. Welcome Thank to the chat. You. I'm excited Thanks to have for you. Me. You know, I'm always on TV with men because of sports, so I don't know if I've ever been on TV with so many women. Well, this is going to be so much better. Yes. Welcome to the lady party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, all you ever wanted to be was a lawyer. How did the, the sports angle ever come into play? Well, at first I thought I could find a job in sports as an attorney. I wanted to be the first female general manager in Major League Baseball, and there still hasn't been one. So I always oh, tell wow. people, you know, it could still happen, but I've, I've sort of moved past that now. So I looked around for jobs in sports as an attorney, but it's something really hard to get into starting out. You generally have to go to a firm that has a sports practice and do other things first, and then one day you move into sports. So I took a job at a firm in Atlanta where I'm originally from and I was doing commercial real estate finance. Mm. Wasn't doing sports at all, but I'm a huge sports fan and I just couldn't help myself so I started a blog. Because everybody starts a blog, of right? Course. Of course. Yeah. Although back then not everybody was doing it. And I wrote about legal issues in sports because that was something you know unique to me, a perspective I had that a lot of the other bloggers out there didn't have. And after a couple of years that really took off. I never thought it was going to lead to a career change. It was just a hobby. Mm. Do you what? think it was meant to be? I do. Now that I look back, I see that what I loved about being an attorney, I actually loved being an attorney. Most attorneys won't say that, but I really <laughs> did. Right. I wasn't looking to get out of it. And now when I look back, I realize what I loved about being an attorney was that I drafted documents all day because at the heart of it, what I love is to write. And so I loved that piece of the job. Then I got to go write about sports and that's far more fun than writing about loans and other commercial mm -hmm. real estate. Mm -hmm. so well, you're always going to be an attorney. So, right. yeah, so exactly. yeah, that's always going to be within you and it's going to help you throughout your entire life. I always yes. say if I had it to do over again, law would be the thing to just go for and no matter what career really? you're going into. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the best thing to have in your back pocket. I so agree 100%. Kudos to you for that. And then you went into sports reporting yes. and then you started your own brand, your own company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, how did this transition happen into your own company? So I went to work for ESPN for a couple of years and that was an amazing experience. I mean, that's why I left the practice of law because ESPN asked me to come work for them and I thought who says no to uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. you don't you don't say no <laughs> fabulous experience there but at the end of the day most sports networks do not employ a sports business reporter full-time there are only a few sports business reporters in the country and as we've seen recently with ESPN with Fox Sports everybody's cutting writers mm -hmm. and it just didn't feel like a stable career path the way that law had I mean that's part of the reason I wanted to be a lawyer it was a stable career path with good earning potential and suddenly I was in sports media which is the exact opposite of all this. That. My husband's in sports media too, and so yeah. you know I was able to see what had happened in his career and kind of know that maybe that wasn't where I wanted to be full time. So I started thinking about my skill set. I didn't want to go back to practicing law. I think it would have been really hard to go from working at home to going back into a law office and back to billable hours, which were never that enjoyable to begin mm -hmm. with. Yeah. And I realized so many people had reached out to me and said, "How did you get that guest blog? Or how did you get that podcast interview? Or how did you end up on TV the first time?" And I was helping other people sort of be their own publicist, and I thought. I could make money doing this. <laughs> and I had some experience from working in a PR agency. And so I sort of made the leap actually exactly two years ago this week, I believe. Oh, wow. So Happy my, work anniversary. Yes, business anniversary. Oh, yeah, yes. I like that yeah. one. So let's go back up. to the days of you being a sports reporter. Do you, I always hear so many times how female sports reporters are never respected. Did you find any of that? Do you find any of that to be true? Did you have any experience with that? I've had a couple of very small experiences. I actually think it goes back to having the law degree. I think that the men in the sports media who are my colleagues and my peers don't mess with me because they know I know my stuff. And it's unfortunate for my other female friends who are in the industry who don't have that background, who do tell me their horror stories mm -hmm. all the time. I think it also helps that by the time I was at ESPN, I was with my now husband who's been in sports media a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And I think people aren't going to mess with me because they're not going to mess with him. Do you, th <laughs> do you think uh, the women that do have a hard time in the field as sports reporters, do you think it's because the men are intimidated? 
I think it's a few different things. You know, I was telling someone this morning about when I go into journalism programs and I talk to young women who want to be in sports journalism, that I tell them about some of the worst experiences I've had. And I realized that most of those have come from social media. It's from uh, men who would never say it to my face, of course but they not. feel fine saying yes. it to me on Twitter. Trolls, or, keyboard gangsters. Yes, yeah. Posting pictures of me on message boards and taking shots about, you know, the first time I was yeah. ever on TV, somebody took a screenshot of me. I was on Comcast Sports Southeast, which was a regional sports network, and this guy posted my picture on a message board and he said I had funny looking knees. Like wow. that was his insult. What? And I yeah. remember thinking, like, what are knees supposed to look like? And, and who's just, got hot knees right? anyway? Like, what a weird <laughs> insult. Are there knee models? I don't know. I Clearly, oh, I couldn't be one, according to this guy. And I just realized that it was mainly jealousy when it mm -hmm. came from fans, that they would love to be doing the job that I was doing. And within the industry, I just haven't experienced that. My male colleagues have treated me incredibly respectfully. Nice. I have only had a couple of small situations where I thought that I was being treated differently because I was female. Mm -hmm. And I just try not to Worry about it. I try to go in there and do my job, walk into the press box like I belong there, you know, dress appropriately, mm -hmm. like have the right conversations with people, network with them. Uh, I spent all of last week at SEC Media Days, and you know, I, I try to be one of the guys, not in the sense that I want to act exactly like them, but that I want to, I want to be friends with them, and I want to show them that like we all can be in the industry together. I'm not taking your job. What I'm doing is very different from what you're doing, and that's worked for me. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your new company, Guide My Brand. Yes. So I started Guide My Brand two years. ago ago to work with entrepreneurs and nonfiction authors because I've written a couple of books now too and sort of learned the ropes around book marketing and publicity and wanted to work in particular with females who were solo entrepreneurs and most of my clients fit that profile because I read this stat that I hated about how only 19% of women who are experts in the media uh, I'm sorry, only 19% of experts in the media are women. And as a woman who had been featured as an expert in the media, that really upset me. And the study said it was because women don't feel confident enough to pitch themselves, that they don't think they're enough of an expert. They never feel like they're enough to put themselves out there for those opportunities. And so I work with women and show them that they are enough and that they have these experiences and this expertise that they need to share with the world. And it is so incredibly rewarding. So then you wrote this book, Saturday Millionaires, How Winning Football Builds Winning Colleges. Yes. What is this book about? It's not, it's, not, it's not a playbook, right? No, okay. no. Uh, I never report on football on the field. That also probably keeps me from getting comments from fans mm -hmm. or from fellow media yeah, members. Because so I'm reporting on the business side, and they know I know my stuff because of my law degree. And so when I started writing about the business side of college football, it completely transformed how I looked at college football. I had always been a college football fan. And then I started going on campuses and meeting with athletic directors and touring facilities and meeting with student athletes and realized a lot of what I thought was wrong. And so the book is really my attempt to share with the average fan everything I've learned covering college football from the inside. That's what I've got. That sounds really interesting considering <laughs> everything. I mean, we're such, this is Jacksonville, obviously. We've mm -hmm. got the Gators, you know, a couple hours away, Georgia up north. That's actually a really, you've got such an interesting oh, career path. Thank you. It was so Fair. cool to listen. So and I mean, pick excelled up book. at all of it. <laughs> the expert. <laughs> and She's part of that 19% expert. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. It's such a treat to have you here. And if you would like to follow Christy, she is very active on Twitter. Her website is guidemybrand.com. Her book, Saturday Millionaires, How Winning Football Builds Winning Colleges, is available on Amazon.com. And coming up next, looking for something fun, inexpensive, and educational to do with the kids over summer break, Noreen Young is sharing a few out-of-the-box ideas you'll see when we come back.